There are currently two ice caps, Greenland and Antarctica. But 20,000 years ago, in other words, not so long ago, there were much larger ice caps. The Laurentide ice sheet was located in North America, while Fenoscandia covered northern Europe and western Siberia. Between the two of them, these two ice caps, at the height of the glacial period, had reduced sea levels by 120 meters because ice had locked water on the continents. These lower sea levels made it possible to cross seas on foot, for instance between France and England. At the time, it was possible to cross the Bering Strait between Asia and America on dry land, leading scientists to postulate that this was how Native Americans went from Asia to America. In terms of global warming, the risk of smaller ice caps is different in Greenland and Antarctica. In Greenland, melting is already occurring. If it continues, it could have an added effect. The more the ice melts, the more the ice cap flattens and loses in latitude. The warmer it is, the more it melts. This phenomenon might considerably decrease Greenland, with a threshold effect estimated between 3 and 5 degrees warmer than currently, bearing in mind that this would take thousands of years. The processes which would lead to a decline in Antarctica are different. Since it is currently about zero degrees on the periphery, so it would really need to warm up considerably in the summer for significant fusion of at least 10 degrees to occur. However, part of this ice floats on the sea, acting as a flying buttress for the glaciers which are above. In other words, if these floating parts melt from being in contact with the ocean, the flying buttress effect lessens and glaciers speed up. There is proof that this phenomenon exists. We found proof when floating parts disintegrated in the Antarctic Peninsula. We have reason to believe this phenomenon is occurring in the Amundsen Sea, where two glaciers are speeding up. An altimetry clearly shows that the surface of the cap is diminishing in these regions. What we have yet to find out over the next 500 years are the speed and amplitude at which this will occur.